It is back. Comments of the week. All right, welcome back to One Bar and Lupagus Show. I'm One Bar with Lupagus. And uh, you guys have been requesting this to come back, and it is back. We'll be back every damn week talking about the top comments of the week. So remember that when you're, when you're putting them down there. Yeah, if you want to get a good comment about your private parts, then get yourself the Lumberjack from Happy Nuts. Look at this thing. It is the ultimate grooming tool. It's got a trimmer. It's got a nose trimmer attachment. It's got a body trim head. It's got two guards, and it's got USB charging. Happy nut or happy nuts lumberjack boom link is in the description. Get it right now, 30 bucks till the end of January. Boom, do it. Uh, get that thing all trimmed up for Valentine's Day. Ooh, Nothing, nobody maybe. wants a bush on Valentine's Day. Uh, no, Valentine's no. Day bush is the pits. Valentine's Day bush is like getting one of those chocolates that has like the cherry filling inside. It's so I gross. actually like cherry, I like Man, the orange, I like too. bush too. Uh, no, uh, let's, uh, let's do this. So this, we did like, I think there's five or six. Um, let's just hop right into it. All right. Uh, Uber good air says none of those dudes you pick. Well, so this is based off of up against the seven round mock draft. None of those dudes, uh, you pick will win a game. Quarterback wins games. Look at all those Super Bowl winners. You remember any D line names? Only quarterbacks matter. The Vikes have sucked since Fran Tarkin because we never had a GOAT quarterback. Draft a quarterback until we get it right. Another D Hunter will never get us to the Super Bowl. Yeah, well, I mean, there was three quarterbacks I would take in the first round. None were there, so I went D-line heavy. I think I went edge, D-line, D-line. I ended up with a Cam Ward, the cornerback from Washington State in the mid-rounds, uh, who some people like. I haven't done a little bit, but he seems like an intriguing prospect. Uh, not every draft is going to go the way you want. I didn't trade up. I stayed put, and that's the way it shook out. Well, and the thing that stuck out to me is like, I mean, there's a lot of quarterbacks that don't work out. There's a lot of quarterbacks that get drafted and don't take you. I mean, Josh Allen's, uh, Herbert, Tua. I mean, how many first? Trevor, Trevor Lawrence. Uh, a lot of quarterbacks out there that just don't get you there. And Fran Target didn't get us, didn't get us a Super Bowl. Got us no. there. And, and look who else. I mean, look who's in there. And Dak Prescott was a fourth round pick. Brock Purdy was a seventh round pick. So. Uh, it doesn't always relate to where uh, it doesn't have to be a first a first round quarterback doesn't equal success. Guaranteed. I would almost argue the opposite, where I would gladly take a solid, studly defensive, full defensive line than than just a mm -hmm. top ten quarterback. Got to win hey. the trenches. Got to win the trenches. There's quarterbacks that that, that win it too. Look at Patrick Mahomes. We we see it. So mm -hmm. I get his point. Uh, guitar person. Anyone else a little concerned about how horseshit or D looked at the end of the season? Question mark. Oh, yeah, of course. Are you concerned? Are you, Lombard? Are you concerned? I'm not as concerned as I should be. Uh, I'm more concerned that they seemed like they were checked out. Um, I mean, obviously, I mean, we can say it a million times. Injuries are part of the game, but we were depleted. Uh, confidence was so damn low at that point. So, concerned? No. I'll be concerned. Give, give me till week three next year. A little surprised how it fell off the map. I mean, it was <laughs> like the best defense in the league. And all of a sudden, we were just horrible. Couldn't stop anybody. Uh, you go back to Byron Murphy going out. That was huge. I guess, you know, his role in that secondary is absolutely huge for this team. Uh, Caleb Evans couldn't cut it. Uh, absolutely atrocious. And, you know, Harrison Smith failed to make plays. The pass rush wasn't getting home. It was getting close. just wasn't getting there. So, yeah, I was a little concerned. But I also think, you know, long season, they were worn out. And they're on the field a lot because the offense was going three and out there with the shitty quarterbacks they had, especially the Josh Dobbs. Mm -hmm. Uh, game so more note injuries. I think that's the biggest reason. Well, one thing you didn't mention, or one player you didn't mention that uh doesn't ha we haven't mentioned a ton during that late stretch is DJ Wanham. I mean, when he went down too, that was a mm -hmm. big hit to the defense, big hit to the defense, fast rush. Oof, yep, absolutely. David Ditter McCarthy at 11, grow a set and take the best quarterback in the entire draft class. Dobbs and Hall can bridge to back up JJ next year. All three mobile quarterbacks. KOC, evolve your scheme. Okay, the worst part about this is Dobbs and Hall can bridge. No, they can't. They can't. There's no bridge. If you try to walk across that bridge, you are falling in the river. You are falling in the creek. That bridge is horrible. Uh, JJ McCarthy, I don't hate him. 11 is just too rich for me. Trade down if you're going to take him. I think he's a Brock Purdy type. You can get the ball quick, make decisions when he has to, but you have to have a very good run game, I think, with him. Uh, I don't know. He hasn't done it yet, so I shouldn't say he can't win a game. Um, but I think he can definitely manage one and make the throws that need to be made. Yeah, I mean, I think he's got a lot better tools than Brock Purdy. I get the comparison, but uh, I think he's got a way higher ceiling than Brock Purdy. But my 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 thing that sticks out here is grow a pair and take McCarthy. 
I'm fine with him growing a pair. I want him to grow a pair and get into the top three. That's growing mm-hmm. a pair, not just sitting there at 11 waiting for a quarterback. You want to grow a big old pair of beautifully shaven balls by the lumberjack. Yeah. You trade up top three, you get your quarterback. And I think like, you know, sitting there and taking a quarterback like McCarthy is very similar to sitting there and taking a quarterback like Ponder. Yeah, that's, that's just safe. That's too safe. If we're at 11 and we take McCarthy, I'm going to be mad. Yeah. Yeah. There's no value there. At least be, not right. I want to be downright ornery. <laughs> be like me when we traded out at 12. <laughs> <laughs> you were being a baby. JM717 says, Bears first overall pick for Justin Jefferson. So two sides of this. Would the Bears do that? And would we do that? Okay. Uh, and this, yeah, you, would, you would assume this is for a quarterback. Yeah. And you want to have Justin Jefferson go against you twice a year to one of your you – know, no, you don't trade Justin Jefferson to a division opponent. You don't trade Justin Jefferson. You don't get a Justin Jefferson. It's rare to get a player – well, we had three maybe receivers like that in the, in the career of the Vikings. You don't – Trade Justin Jefferson. You keep him. You build around him. He can make even an average quarterback look good. So you keep Justin Jefferson, and definitely not to the Bears. Yeah, uh, and you 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 nailed it right off the bat. I think we would let Justin Jefferson retire before we sent him to a NFC North rival. That yeah. would be not. Sw- I mean, this could be like some random team too. This could be the the Titans. We're not trading him. We're not trading him. But the Bears, especially, we're not facing him twice. Are you kidding me? God no. Yeah. Say thank you. You can just Horrible. sit out. <laughs> we'll just find you. For years. He would destroy us. He would destroy us. Yep. A lot of Jefferson talk. A lot, I'm very, very surprised. A lot of people just like let's trade Jefferson. Jefferson, whatever. I don't. Get uh, it. Reach, Reach, Specter. Quasi has done better with undrafted free agents than the actual freaking draft. Uh, I don't. It's probably close. It's actually probably pretty close. Well, I looked at 2022. I think I think the only 2022 was was our punter, mm-hmm. right? Yeah. And obviously Pace, Najee this year, uh, Andre Carter they signed. I mm-hmm. um, think that's pretty much it. He's done very well. Yeah, and what does he hit on in the draft? Jordan Addison, Makai Blackman, maybe Ty Chandler. Seeing if he Ed Ingram. I mean, whether you want to call it or not, he's you're starting right guard. Uh, so his picks probably outweigh the. But I get what he's saying here. Uh, he's he's had success in the undrafted free agent market. Is it is it a good thing that so many undrafted free agents are getting so much run around this team? I don't know. You know what? It's good that they're uh, recognizing the best players and putting them out there regardless if they're undrafted or not. I think that's key. You can't just be like, oh, well, he was undrafted. I'm not going to play him. So I see what you're saying by that point. Yeah, I don't know. I mean, no, that's good. I, I, think, I think the undrafted free agents that are, that are getting playing time deserve it and would get playing time on, on a lot of teams in the league. So mm-hmm. uh, good point. Next up, Art. Uh, screw it. No sunshine. They didn't fire KOC. Meanwhile, Belichick, Carroll, and Harbaugh are all available. This is why the Vikings, under Wilf, will never win a championship. They'll never hire a proven coach. They're not serious. And I, a little backstory here. Mm-hmm. I was going back and forth with Art in this one, and he went off the rails. He was calling me names. Really? He was calling me pissant, little boy. Uh, he was calling me cupcake. I mean... I don't know if he was shit faced or what, but art, uh, I think oh, I really? broke art. And then I finally just said, like, I just read by art, like that we're done here. I mean, you can, you can rip on me all you want. I'm pretty, pretty thick skin, but, uh, I mean, that aside the comment, right. like, like we're, we'll never hire a proven coach. I don't, I mean, I... <sighs> Yeah, I, you're not just going to fire KOC right now because these guys are available. I mean, it, it's kind of weird. Like you got to have reason and and to fire him. And you can say, well, the seven and nine season is enough. But look what he went through this year. I don't know. I, I just think with the Vikings, I don't know if even a, a proven coach can come here and change things. This roster needs a lot of help, especially on the defensive side of the football. So uh, I don't know. I, I I don't agree with Art on this one at all. I mean, you're not just going to fire your coach because these guys are out there. Well, yeah. I mean, I mean, these guys got fired for a reason too. Um, they haven't been very good lately. And here's my thing is like hiring a proven coach isn't, it's not 1985 anymore. It's not 1993. Like they don't do that anymore. That's not what they mm-hmm. do. I mean, if you look at the coaches in the league, Andy Reed was a proven hire. Um, other than that, there really isn't any Mike McCarthy, well, I guess Peterson, maybe in Doug Peterson, Jacksonville, I guess. Yeah. Would be. And it's not working. They mm-hmm. didn't make the playoffs. So Doug Peterson, Andy Reed, Sean Payton for the Broncos. Other than that, if I could sit and list all these off, John Harbaugh, when he was hired, he was a defensive backs coach. Mm-hmm. Uh, Zach Taylor, Kevin Stefanski, uh, Dan Campbell, D'Amico Ryans, 
Sean McVay, Mike McDaniel, Jared Mayo, Brian Dable, all these guys. I mean, I could keep going. Well, they're thinking are proven. I mean, the game's evolving too. I mean, so you get these old tread coaches who are, you know, stuck in these old ways. The game's evolving. The game's changing every year. And, and obviously with the rules, this is a more offensive game. So uh, the other thing too, the old hard-nosed defensive coach maybe isn't the thing anymore. I don't want a 75-year-old coach. No. Proven or not, they got fired for a reason. So this is just well, the that way being the NFL said, is. It, if the Viking Tech, you know, fired KLC, I would definitely want them to consider these guys. I mean, why wouldn't you? Well, yeah. I mean, and, and they probably would be considered, but I don't, I, I think even if when KOC, if and when he gets fired, hopefully he doesn't because that means we're losing, they're probably going to like go young again. I mean, that's just what the NFL does right now. Mm -hmm. I agree. So, I'm Art, so hey, I'm sorry, Art called your names. They call me, they call me Cupcake. I don't, what's that mean? Mm. A delicious dessert? It means you're the light in the loafers. Oh, oh really? <laughs> <laughs> now, hey, Art, keep keep those comments coming hot and heavy. Like I said, you can't hurt my feelings. Bring, bring it on, man. I like the I like the arguments. Oh, so th those are our comments for the week. Uh, we'll be back next week with. So load those comments up. We'll we we pick the best ones or, or the more entertaining ones, I should say. Absolutely, it's, it's back. Comments of the week will be back every single week for the rest of the year. Of rest of 2024, hell. Yes, and you guys think of the next comment to make. Remember this, Flaming Hot Cheetos were invented by a janitor. Knew it.